we're back here week three in Hartsville. Um, we had a busy couple of weeks, so we weren't able to get the show out past couple of uh, episodes that we were supposed to have. I'm here as always, uh, David Mack over here to my left. Uh, my name is Will Habel. Um, yeah, we're just going to go through a quick quick little episode today, just going over recaps of games, some headlines that happened the past week, as well as looking into next week. Same schedule as always, so I hope you guys stick around for what we got to come. All right, so three headlines for you guys this week. Uh, the first being uh, women's tennis, Jade Belogy, uh winning the Case Invitational uh, on the women's single side in the main draw. Um, went 5-0 and on the singles part of things, as well as a combined 8-0 and at the Case Invitational. Uh, great showing by her, and uh, she beat... Um, a girl that she had lost to last year and uh, didn't drop a set the entire time, so she was pretty dominant throughout the the tournament. Um, the mental game was much better for her, and she did really well. So congrats to her, and we look forward to seeing more from her for the rest of the fall season and into the, the main season in the spring. Um, big news from the men's soccer side. Uh, now top 10 in the country, ranked 10th in the United Soccer Coaches Poll, after a 2-0 start, two dominant games, uh, beat Nova Southeastern 4-1, and then had a great second half at least McCray and won 5-0 with all five of those goals coming in the second half. Um, and so they're they're on a roll now, so great recognition there by the coaches pulled to, to put them in the top 10. And then on the women's soccer side, great news out of there, Kira Bolka, uh, as a SAC Women's Soccer Player of the Week, had a phenomenal showing, two goals, two assists in the game against um, their second game of the season. They played women's soccer. Yeah, um, Bluefield State. Bluefield State. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Yeah, so up in the West Virginia Mountains. Yep. So uh, gr- great showing by both soccer teams to start off two and zero. Men's soccer has outscored their opponents nine to one, and women's soccer's uh, blanked both of their opponents and outscored them nine to nothing. Uh, so great showing for both soccer teams, and they will look to continue that that showing uh, throughout the season. Yeah, um, speaking speaking of women's soccer, they're actually playing right now as we speak uh, up in uh, Barton. Well, they start in 15 minutes. Start in 15 but, minutes, but they're playing uh, up in uh, the— Yep, at Barton College. Uh, so they, they will look to extend their win streak to three games, start off 3-0 and um, in the season, this one being their probably their toughest challenge yet. So uh, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing how that one um, plays out, and we'll get a— recap out and a score update for you guys on social media we'll make sure you guys hear all about that game and uh, just also wanted to shout out once again before we close the segment up just how well uh soccer programs have done just in the first week of competition i mean it goes testament to what work michael and michael and michael put in yep. in the off season the other those uh, men and women are always working hard so good to see them show up in a uh, national recognition for sure for sure it's sticking on the soccer side of things. Uh, men's soccer, like we said earlier, had a big uh, showing in the past couple of games. Uh, starting off, they faced Nova Southeastern with a big 4-1 win um, here in Hartsfield. That one was a pretty cool game to watch, seeing them open up the season, coming out firing like that. Uh, Johan Chopin opened up the season scoring for the Cobras in the 26th minute with the assist coming from Oscar Kufman, followed by goals from Duggan, Benedict, and Taco Weir at Jr., uh, Carter Nunnery stood tall between the pipes, allowing one goal from Nova in the second half. And then jumping up to the mountains of North Carolina, they were at Lisa McRae with a 5-0 clean sheet win. Uh, goals from Yori Kaiser, Tom Dixon, Mitchell Stars, Oscar Kufman, and Ay- Ayub Ben Amar. Uh, Carter Nunnery also stood tall between the pipes once again with three saves on the day. Impressive 24 shots from the Cobra as they outscored or outshot Lee's McCray, my bad, um, for 24 to 5. So, pretty commanding win from the men. Um, David, two, how did you? Two yeah. commanding wins. I, I know you, you were up in the booth for uh, the men's soccer game against Nova here in Hartsville. I was not. You weren't? No. So, uh, unfortunately, because trust me, I wish I would have been out there for that one. Uh, big soccer 
Got you, were, you were inside. Yeah, you? I assume. That was our three uh, triple header with uh, men, yes. men's and women's soccer. And, and, all the and, all. and we had three days worth of volleyball. We hosted the Coker Cobra Classic here. Um, six teams, uh, Wingate, uh, us, West Virginia Wesleyan, Francis Abbey. Marion, Belmont Abbey, um, and USC Aiken. And... So there was there we had a long long weekend of volleyball that it, we had yeah, to, that it went from calling no volleyball games to, to eleven in the course of yeah. forty eight hours. Yeah. So that that was work, that yeah. was very very interesting. Uh, but yeah, so that that opener was Thursday night against um, Francis Marion that went five sets. So you know I was I was inside for that one, but I. I got to read the the recap and I, I I got to hear about it and I mean Nova Southeastern is no slouch whatsoever. Um, they're near the top of their respective conference and so to be able to really convincingly beat that team um, to to open up the season is a, it, that's a big win and just you know it's part of the reason why they were they were given the recognition that they were being top 10 in the country now. Yeah, well-deserved. I mean, especially the confidence for those men head, heading into a big game this weekend, which we'll talk more about here in a little bit. But, yeah. Um, now women's soccer. Yeah, out yeah. to the women's side of things. David, you want to take us? Yeah, so, I mean, women's soccer had a, had a just about the same. Yeah. I mean, literally, they also scored nine goals and blew out both of their opponents. Now, um, the Emmanuel... Uh, Four nil clean sheet W freshman standout Kira Bolka tallied the first goal of the season in the 18th minute, and then three more goals were added to the sheet by Chloe Mullen, Isabella Reichel, and Maya Clark. Um, the Cobras played some lockdown defense, which allowed for um, Ryan Parkin and Hannah Settlemeyer uh, to not see much action back there. But a uh, great play by the entire team. Uh, they stayed true to their ideals and played the way that they wanted to play and they got the win because of it. Um, and then the same thing, Bluefield State, um, they uh, were pretty stagnant in the first half. And then um, from what I, I've i heard from some of the coaching and stuff, they kind of laid into them at, at halftime and, and said, hey, like you, got, like you guys are so much better than this. You need to really pick it up in the second half. And they did. And they ended up winning 5 nothing. Um, at another clean sheet by the keepers. Um, they turned on the afterburner second half right off all five goals. So that was nil nil at halftime, and they they uh, they won five nothing. So a testament to you know the the halftime speech and kind of yeah. lighting the fire underneath them and and getting things going. Um, Bates and Bolka tallied two goals apiece, and then Bolka also added two assists. So that was her big game that kind of gave her that recognition for the, the the SAC women's soccer offensive player of the week. So um a great play all around to to finish that off. That's that's uh, all we got for soccer on the uh, recap side of things. But now we're gonna jump inside to our busy uh volleyball weekend that we had oh sorry. Didn't you throw a little interesting over here? Um, but yeah, just to be on the more serious side of things, uh, the Cobras defeated Belmont Abbey in four sets in the Cobra Classic this past week. Uh, Taylor Hills was on fire all night long with 23 kills and a .404 kill percentage on the evening. Uh, Layla Hickson recorded 34 assists, and Alyssa Carey had her first collegiate double-double with 16 digs and 10 kills. Um, congratulations to Alyssa Carey on that achievement. And get brushing off the uh, freshman status uh, already, so uh, good, good looks for you guys. Yeah, they're, they're really excited. I, you know, I, I, I'm very familiar with the volleyball coaching staff, and and so I get to um, hear about, uh, the, you know, how excited they are about the team. They're really excited about this team moving forward. Um, you know, Coach Dragan got her first real recruiting class in here. And and so she gets to kind of build this program up, and you know, from they're already half of the way or a quarter of the way to their win total, you know, and and so they're they're really really looking forward to to this team moving forward. They've got you know some of their best players are freshmen, you know, and and 
you, they, you've got four or five freshmen that regularly play and play a lot of minutes. So, uh, yeah, she's she's really excited uh, about the team moving forward, and, and I'm excited to watch this team be able to, to to grow and watch it happen here in Hartsville. Yeah, the uh, the energy is definitely there. We were me and David were talking before we started recording the show. They were out practicing uh, behind us. So lights are off now, but we were like they're, they're like they're they're so loud. I don't know if we're able to record. Yeah. So yeah. it's always it's always good to see the team like be vocal like that, communicating communicating on the court. So that's always good to see for sure. Um, All right, uh, on to on to yeah. tennis. Um, you know, so tennis's main season is in the spring, but uh, they also have a fall season. So it's very. Um, it's different. I mean, a lot of teams that play in the spring have some fall scrimmages, but tennis has a pretty full slate during the fall. No head-to-head matches, but they play in tournaments just about every weekend. Um, and so they were in uh, Case, South Carolina, at the Case Invitational, uh, at the Case Tennis Center. And on the uh, men's side, so... Um, Sam Winter was the the highlight uh, on in singles, uh, winning three matches to qualify for the semifinals um, in the uh, flight A in the main draw. Um, on his way, he defeated Barton's uh, Hannes Tilehead uh, six two seven five, so one straight sets. Um, Emmanuel's Henrique Torella Fertini Del Castro uh, th- um, won the first set dominant fashion 6-2 and then he was up 3-1 when the uh his opponent retired um me- meaning de- like injury default and then um uh Chawans, uh Marcel Ungerbeck uh beat him in three uh in in straight sets 6-4 six, 6-3 six, um in what coach Tom Simpson dubbed as his best match in his four years here as a cobra uh, so great play by Sam. Unfortunately, fell in the semifinal matchup, one match short of the final. But but great play by him. And um, and then on the double side of things, uh, another semifinal appearance. Uh, Joao Casas and uh, Andy Hun um, in the main draw to go on a run to the semifinals. Um, they defeated um, Andre Ampong and Charlie Fromo from Belmont Abbey six four to move to the quarterfinals. And then defeated Marillo, Gracio, Martins, and James Girdler from Manuel with a 6-3 scoreline. And then, unfortunately, fell in a relatively close match in the semifinals. Again, one match short of the final. And then the women's side. So the big highlight for either of the tennis teams is uh, Jade Belagy won the singles title on the women's side. Of course, as we mentioned previously... Um, in the first two rounds, she defeated Barton's, uh, Alexander Saez, 6-1, 6-1, dominant way to open, uh, in the first round. And then Belmont Abbey's Mackenzie McCarthy, and also in straight sets, 6-4, 6-3, to reach the quarterfinal. Um, McCarthy was actually an opponent that Belgi had lost to last season, so she was looking for revenge and, and, and got it. She was down one four in the first set and she surged back to win in straight sets. So great way to persevere, uh, great way to lock it in the mental game and, and, and be able to pull that one out. Um, and the quarters of the semis, I mean, really similar. Uh, she defeated Barton's uh, Sylvia Fernandez, six, three, six, two, another dominant win. And then Erskine's Ariana Jativa, uh, six, four, and then in a tie break, seven, six. So she was actually in the tie break, tied at six games all. She was down five nothing in the tie break and won seven straight points to win the tie break seven five to win the match, which was huge. Um, and she notched the spot in the final because of it. Um, and then in the final, uh, it, I felt like she was kind of over prepared at this point, and she won six three six one against Belmont Abbey's Hanley Reiner uh, in pretty dominant fashion. So. Um, very exciting stuff from from her, and then on the double side, it was an all Cobras doubles final. Um, so uh, Jade Belagy, um, who won the singles title, uh, partnered up with Everson Banning to win three matches to make the final, defeating Emmanuel's uh, Shada Visa Ghosh and Sabina Roa, six uh, three, and then Erskine's Teodora Stefanovic and Rupar Karb, seven uh, five. 
And then Barton's uh, Tilda Howler and Irma Grandstam, 6-4. So relatively close matches and doubles. Um, and then on the other side of things, uh, Salome Sierra and uh, Caroline Myers teamed up to be the other pairing heading to the finals. They defeated Barton's uh, Leone Hellum uh, Lilligan and Arroyo Mavi, 6-2 in dominant fashion. Belmont Abbey's Leilani Sanchez and Elizabeth Volman, 6-4. And then faced off against Erskine's uh, Jativa, who Belagi defeated in the singles draw to reach the final. And then uh, Eva Jankatic, uh 6-3. Uh, so the two Cobra pairings ended up not facing off in the final, unfortunately, as they didn't want to risk injury to players that had kind of re-aggravated some stuff. So, uh, But nonetheless, all doubles final. And if they would have played it out, it would have been a Cobra winning the uh, winning the doubles title. So it was a great play, especially on the women's side, but also on the men's side. And um, we'll talk more about what they're, they're doing for the rest of the fall here in a, in a second. But yeah, great showing over the weekend by the tennis teams. Uh, let us know in the comments what sport you think David played in college. Just I'm wondering. <laughs> you love you talking about some tennis. Yeah, uh, my my thing is is that in a lot of other institutions, tennis gets overlooked. And, and so that's why, like, when I came here um, and I started, I started off as the, as the GA here in Athletic Media Relations, now the assistant director, I, I wanted to make it a goal to make tennis highlighted a little bit more. Um, and and it's, it, it's also just easier to talk about yeah. because... That's like me talking about lacrosse. Yes. It's pretty, it comes, just comes natural. Yes. Yeah. So, you, you, you I know what I'm talking about in the aspect, and so it's so much easier to... And when, you know, Coach Tom's texting me paragraphs during, hey, this is what just happened. You know, this is this is how it, it how it went on. And, you know, we're really happy and we're really excited about how this went. And, and you know, he's chatting your ear off. So, I mean, I get a lot of that. Um, and I also, my, my uh, cubicle in the athletic office is right next to the, the tennis GA as well. So, there you go. Uh, I, a lot of tennis talk. But, y yes, I... I, I I care about it. I want to see it highlighted, and and they deserve it for sure. Hey, also, uh, congratulations on the uh, promotion. Hey, man, we're uh, moving up in the world. Yeah, we uh, wanted to remain a Cobra for a little bit longer than than the time that I was going to be here, and uh, some spots opened up, so I'm going to be taking over, and I can't wait to see this grow even more than what 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 it is now. And I think that we can really do that. So yeah, stay tuned for all of the. Me and David have a pretty big plan of what we're gonna do to the probably have already seen it but uh to the social medias yeah. and kind of revamping yeah uh, better, better graphics, graphics, graphics better you know uh we're gonna uh, i'm gonna start handwriting out recaps i've already kind of done that and what you may have seen on the on the story last evening so tuesday evening we're kind of putting the recaps on with the with the graphics just so you guys can have easier access to those things be able to read them lots of other things that we want to do um the new director is going to be here later this month and so we're going to sit down and hammer out some stuff but yeah we're really excited for this this department moving forward and and the podcast is just another one of those things that we can do to, to highlight some of these awesome changes and if you guys want to be a part of this team be part of help me and david i mean we have a we have a, we need a lot of help with yeah, things yeah, so. yeah with a lots of you know if, if if you're willing to volunteer your time and 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 get some experience we we've got some experience you definitely if you definitely you know, learn a lot um, here, that's for sure but so yeah it's, it's good I mean, being, yeah yeah <laughs> uh but yeah me me and david but uh this is kind of our thing that we like to do we like to obviously you guys know what i do f um on the not the little cross side of things but on the media side of things so trying to bring that all to coker um, me and David put our heads together. Hopefully, make something cool. Hopefully, yeah. something you guys enjoy to see on um, the other side of things. So, um, just let us know what you guys think of it. Uh, feel free to reach out. Leave a comment on the, the YouTube video if you're watching on YouTube. Feel, we'll take any feedback. And then, like once again, if you want to help, we're always yeah. with what if 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 you can take some pictures. If if you want to learn how yeah. to do photography, if you want to learn videography, if you're really interested in that stuff, want to learn what happens behind the scenes on the podcast or um, help out in games we can use people. Um, the the biggest thing, broadcasting. If you want a chance to be able to get on air 
Um, you know, obviously we'll have to do a little bit of a vetting process before we just put you on, on the microphone. But, um, you know, if you, if you want to have that learning experience, learn how to set up the equipment, learn how to, you know, run the broadcast. Um, you know, I've, I've got broadcasting experience myself, PA experience. Um, so I, I, I can teach a little bit of that stuff, but, um, just, uh, you know, e even as stuff as little as just moving the camera around at games and, um, helping us set up, tear down, anything like that. We would love, 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 love to have you. So uh, yeah, reach out. Um, especially if you're, if you um, weren't, aren't able to play your sport and you want to help your team other than being on the sideline, broadcasting is a great way. I did it for a lacrosse team last year, and I loved every second of it. You can kind of bring a new, like a different perspective of your sport because you know the team. You know what goes on every day. You've been to the film sessions, the weight room. Like, you know, really, those are your people. So being able to bro, like spotlight that on TV yeah. or as live stream. Especially with the larger, cool. the larger teams where – you know, you're going to have guys redshirting and, and, you know, if, if you want to be more involved, let us know, uh, you know, that's kind of what we had last year with, uh, uh baseball guys helping us out in the booth. And, and so if you, if you're baseball, wrestling, lacrosse, well, you know, wh whatever it may be. And, and, uh, if you're an athlete or if, if you're an athlete that's not in season and wants to, you know, if you're a spring athlete, wants to help us out with you know stuff with with soccer, field hockey, volleyball, you know, maybe you played it in high school and you know about it and you want to get on air and talk about it more than and way more than than willing to work with you and and get you situated on that. So yeah, we're excited about it moving forward and and we want you guys to to be a part of what we do because you know in an athletic department and in a university, students is what makes this place run. So absolutely. Last but not least, we're looking in the next week. Uh, men's, men's tennis travels to Belmont Abbey uh, tomorrow, so Thursday and Friday, for the Belmont Abbey Invitational. Volleyball travels to Limestone Friday night, first serve at 7 p.m. Field hockey travels to number seven, Mount Olive, on Saturday at 1 p.m. And then a big weekend of soccer on the Coker Athletic Turf as men's and women's soccer will host Limestone. Men will play at 4.30, followed by the women at 7.00. Uh, this will be a big matchup for the men as the Lime Limestone Saints are receiving votes in the National Coaches Poll. While your Cobras are an impressive number 10 in the country, so that is a big matchup. Huge matchup here. Not it's only big. not only in conference play, but... Um, oh, just national, yeah, right? national-wise, like, you know, the, the, the Cobras can really solidify their standing in the top 10 if, if they get a big win like this. And uh, uh, But on the flip side, Limestone was preseason number 6. Yeah. And then had a uh, still haven't lost, but they dropped off because they had a tie that they you know they should have beat pretty convincingly. So they're looking for a little bit of redemption to get back into that conversation. And then Cobra is looking for redemption after last year. Uh, Limestone, if you, if, you remember, if you remember or not, but Limestone beat us last year in the regular season and then knocked us out of the conference tournament. One zero. So it's a little bit of bad blood between uh, the Saints and the Cobras. So it should be a if you're in town, me and Hartsill get out to the game 7 p.m. Wait, no, for the 4:30 men's or 4:30. And then, and then hey, but still, then still 7 p.m. Stick, yeah, stick around, around for the women's, women's game because ball be great. Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, both of those teams on the women's side aren't nationally ranked or receiving votes. It's still going to be really good soccer. They're relatively, uh, I, I think the um, our women were ranked 11th in the poll, which is much lower than they should have been. Um, and then Limestone was ranked eighth in the preseason poll. So a little bit of fire underneath our women's side as, as they were kind of underlooked. Um, and then, you know, Limestone is, was above them in that poll. So they were looking to say, hey, you know, we're here, we, we should have, yeah, we should have been this high. We we can compete with these teams and and so um, excited for for both games. It's going to be two really good games here over the weekend, and I'm excited to to be working both of those. And uh, and Will's going to be I'll be on the side of the video game video, and yeah. and we're going to get some photos as well. So yeah, we're really excited to, uh, about those two games. So make sure you come out and and watch that because that is the only two home games uh, up through this weekend here. So make sure to to come out and. And be loud at those games. Not too loud. No air horns. 
Yes, we, we, we were told to uh, highlight that. No air horns. <laughs> no <laughs> air horns. Games. Yes. Uh, but yeah, yell all you want. Um, but yeah, we get excited. Athlete, athletes feed off of that. So even if you're um, your sports onto the winter or spring, the, if you come out, the, people notice you're at the game. So if you come out to a men, or men's soccer, women's soccer, tennis, yeah, when they're, when they're athlete, here. athletes, any, yeah, athletes. volleyball, yeah, exactly. Like the teams notice you're there. So if you come to their games, they'll come to your games. And it just ends up being a better school culture um, for everybody because. Uh, I'm one. If I look over the sideline, people are going crazy. I'm going to play better. Just that. It's yeah. just that adrenaline. Well, then screen. you can get the crowd fired up. You know, you go over, get the, get it into it. Yeah, I mean, at, at a small uh, a campus like this, that's predominantly student athletes. The way that the athletic department runs is athletes supporting athletes in whatever possible ways they can. So, you know, spring athletes going to to events in the fall and fall athletes going to events in the spring and you know e- e- you know even the 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 teams like like you know basketball is the same season as wrestling you know even basketball players going to the wrestling meets that are here uh you know even when you're in season out of season preseason postseason what whatever it may be just just come out and support your athletes come out and support coker cobra athletics and and you know you're not going to be disappointed so yeah but with going off of that that's all we got for this week um come out to the games once again i uh, don't i don't want to stress that enough but uh yeah f- oh. that's all we got for you uh, thank you guys for watching thank you guys for sticking around if you're listening thank you um yeah see you next week see you next week peace yep